is Congressman Rodney Davis of Illinois, a Republican who was on that baseball field more than a year ago when Steve Scalise and others were shot during a baseball practice for the Republican baseball team. So Rodney Davis knows firsthand what it is like to be a target of some kind of political violence. Congressman, thank you so much for being with us this morning. I want to talk about the now. I want to talk about what we have seen over the last few days and these bombs either being sent to kill or to scare all of these people. What do you make of it? Well, I think this is obviously an act of political terrorism. Whether it's the political terrorist who tried to kill me and my friends on a baseball field in Virginia just a year and a half ago, screaming health care while he was firing at us, or this deranged lunatic that needs to be arrested as soon as possible so innocent people aren't hurt by his political motivations that are, are not American. An act of political terrorism with motivations that are not American. Now, you're listening to the voice of Congressman Rodney Davis, Republican from the state of Illinois. You know, Congressman Davis, an act of political terrorism. We're now 12 days before a midterm election. This isn't what America's supposed to be. No, it's not. I continue to believe in the American people. And I continue to believe that the majority of us stand back and we see instances like this. We see the fringe lunatics like this obvious lunatic who is, is creating this havoc. Um, and we need to stand together against them. We're not Republicans and Democrats at times like this. We're all Americans. And I hope and pray that our law enforcement, our great people in law enforcement in this country, find out who's doing this and put a stop to it immediately. Because there are so many innocent people that can and still be hurt by these devices that are going through our postal system, out into our communities, and it's got to be stopped. This is an ongoing situation with all kinds of breaking developments, as we've noted, and law enforcement has done just an amazing job. We're looking at live pictures, Congressman, I don't know if you can see them right now, of the police on the streets of Lower Manhattan near the office of Robert De Niro, who was sent a bomb overnight. The targets this week are all people that President Trump has targeted with his words. They're also people who have been critical of President Trump. Uh, it appears, again, that, that that is the political motivation this time that really, as you look at this, can't be denied. Well, just as, just as all of us on that baseball field were targeted for our political beliefs, uh, yes, this lunatic is targeting individuals who are opposed to President Trump and opposed to other issues. Um, and it's not right. Uh, he's got to be stopped. We've got to make sure that the American people know that we agree on more than we disagree in this country. And we've got to come together as Americans. This is something I said immediately in the aftermath mm -hmm. of the shooting in June of 2017 when I came on your network with Brianna Keller and talked about how we've got to tone down the rhetoric on all sides. We've got to come together as Americans. We can have political differences, but what makes America great is we get to settle those differences at the ballot box, mm -hmm. not with explosive devices in the mailboxes, not with bullets on a baseball field. President Trump this morning uh, has put out two tweets, two statements that both attack the media. One is criticizing the New York Times for a report that they did that he's calling on unsecured cell phones. And the other one is a broad statement suggesting that the media is responsible for the anger right now in America. A very big part of the anger we see today in our society is caused by the purposely false and inaccurate reporting of the mainstream media that I refer to as fake news. It has gotten so bad and hateful that it is beyond description. Mainstream media must clean up its act. Uh, so bad and hateful that it is beyond description, Congressman. Is that the language of healing? Well, I, I, cert uh, I certainly preferred the president's responses yesterday. I thought they were spot on uh, when he made a statement uh, at the White House earlier in the day, and I certainly hope he goes back to that tone. But it's, all, it's not just up to the president. It's up to all of us mm -hmm. to come together and talk about how we can heal this nation because it's the divisiveness that we see uh, all throughout Washington, all throughout this nation right now that leads those on the fringe to think that they can take actions like we saw in, in June mm -hmm. of 17 on a baseball field that, that I ran from and like we're seeing right now. We've got to come together and instead of continue to fight, let's continue to figure out a way to heal. Uh, yes, let's continue to figure out a way to heal. One right note doesn't justify five wrong notes. 
Congressman. And I know you said you'd prefer the type of statement the president first made from the White House in part of his speech last night. But he's blaming the media. There have been eight bombs now sent to people. In this morning, he's suggesting the media is responsible for it. Is that the language of healing? Uh, no, it's not. And I continue to condemn language uh, from any elected official and anyone in the media that, that doesn't want to work together to heal as Americans. Um, my heart goes out to all of you that are in the CNN building uh, today and had to be evacuated yesterday. I know what it's like to have to go home and explain to your, your kids uh, why somebody would want to hurt you. And that's something that I think gets lost in this whole debate. Of, of this divisive rhetoric that we see in this country right now, which is why I hope all of us, including the president, all political leaders of all parties, and everyone in the media, let's figure out a way to ensure that we talk about where we agree in this country most of the time, rather than just our, our instances where we disagree. Congressman, I know you've been through this and seen it firsthand, which is why we're honored to have you on with us this morning to talk about it. You know, we continue to be glad that you're okay and, and that no one uh, you know, no one died in that attack at that baseball field a year ago. And we're lucky this morning that no one has died in this attempted serial bombing uh, that is ongoing. Uh, Congressman Rodney Davis of Illinois, thank you very much for being with us. We continue to follow the breaking news. An eighth bomb sent to the office now of Robert De Niro. There is FBI.